my name is uh, Dr. Christopher Matwa, and I'm a specialist or a consultant in uh, plastic reconstruction and aesthetic surgery. In reconstruction surgery, we are rectifying what's wrong and making it okay. But in aesthetic surgery, it's something which is okay, but the client is not happy with it in that they can function, but they need to look it, uh, they need it to look better. So it's more of making something better. For instance, uh, if someone has big breasts, of course they can function, right? They can go to work, they can do their daily work, they're not bedridden, right? But because of one or two issues in that they cannot socially fit, they cannot find fitting clothes, they cannot uh, maybe work out because of the huge burden on their, on, their, on their chest, then they come now, I reduce so that their life is better. For instance, I've had uh, ladies who could not go to their children's uh, social events at school because of their big breasts. They cannot fit into those uh, spots where that they are given, right? They cannot run with their children, they cannot lift them. But once we do the reduction, then of course, they're able to now function well as mothers of their children. In countries like uh, the United States, they even have uh, laws, all right? There is proper uh, uh, legal framework on how to differentiate between uh, reconstruction and uh, aesthetic. The reason being, in that there are these ladies who come actually they complain of back pain they complain of neck pain they will define that if a doctor can prove that they can remove more than a half a kilo of breast from each side which means a total of like a kilo all right then it ceases to be a cosmetic procedure but a reconstruction or a medical procedure to sort out these medical issues but if you remove less than uh, half a kilo then that's more of aesthetic so what happens is that they especially after breastfeeding you find that these their breasts undergo what we call involution they they lose the mass so they sag and then the nipple and the areola they are facing down what we call tosis so you need to lift them up you know nicely so that they can get that confidence back they want to go to the coast and where the bikini is you know feeling good in the evening they want to come home remove their clothes and you know wear something like a dara with you know without feeling um without feeling bad about how they look like so that's the difference between between the two i normally tell my clients if like someone has never uh, given birth and she's never breastfed with or without the surgery is not a guarantee that they'll be able to breastfeed all right but with the way we do it all right and someone has demonstrated the ability to breastfeed before all right like as she's breastfed there are chances that between 70 to 90 percent will be able to retain that capacity to breastfeed all right maybe to a much less extent yes penile enlargement it's it's a new concept and as of now there are still a lot of um, methods of penile enlargement which have been approved and some are off the book right so on the book is, there are procedures that are approved all right for men especially those who feel like uh, the length okay of, of 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 their penile shaft is you know is not adequate right medically anything at least three centimeters so is below adequate that. below three centimeters that's like a, a micro penis all right so that one um, because the the idea is part of the the, the function of the penis is, is for reproduction okay uh, and uh, as a, as a man okay medically speaking you need to go past the introitus so between the woman. for the woman yeah all right so uh, three centimeters is fair. is fair in that with that you you should be able to penetrate but if it's two centimeters or 2.5 then even penetration is a problem mm -hmm. right so literally this is someone who now needs uh, that procedure when you look at the anatomy there are different aspects to making it long right on the book there are things we call suspensory ligaments that's what we release right because they literally hold the the, the penis to the pubic bone, right? And then, of course, then we do some incisions uh, so that now we release more skin, okay, from the pubic area to advance towards the, the shaft of the penis. So when you do that surgery, literally you elongate it by up to around four centimeters. Off the book, there are, there are implants, all right? Whose safety margin is not well known, all right? 
So if a client comes and then they want like an implant to make it longer, right? Then again, you know, there are these risks you have to discuss, okay? And if they agree, risks like risks like one, uh, we can undergo necrosis, right? Which means that tissue you've dissected eh? and uh, put the implant in, blood flow may be reduced to that area, right? And you, you know, when blood flow goes to an area, uh, re like reduces to an area, then the area undergoes what it dies or what we call necrosis, right? They may be reduced sensitivity, right? There may be difficulties with the uh, erecting right in that uh, it, it, well it's a long penis but it can't erect right so those are some of the risks that you look at and if they're okay with those risks then well and good the sun they come they say doc i feel my length is okay just that i feel it looks like a matchstick it's, it's it's very tiny so now for those ones most of the time what we do we do fat grafting we like we get fat from other parts of the body, we process mostly the abdomen, all right? And actually, so they get to achieve a couple of uh, things during that procedure, right? We get to turn the tummy visuri, all right? And then uh, now that fat we process and then we, we transfer it to the, to the penile shaft and it becomes uh, round, round and nice. Actually, the, there, is, there is a case I did and it was really interesting because uh, the guy came with the wife, I think it was the wife, and she was very specific at the areas she wanted, you know, enlarged. The gut, or the circumference, she needed it bigger there. And uh, transferring the, the fat, eh? under normal circumstances, you retain between 50 to 70% of that fat, right? which means you may lose up to 50%, right? Remember? The transferred fat. Yes, all right? So um, that's one. Two, depending again on how you process the fat, and other factors, yourself, your healing capabilities, because you're not the same when it comes to healing. There's someone who will be cut, and by tomorrow they're okay. There's someone who's cut, and then within two, three weeks, they're still dealing with the, with the cut. So, which means from surgery, the results you see, it may reduce by 50% when it comes to fat. But when it comes to implants, of course, it's 100%. Now, when you talked about the fat dying, sometimes that happens. That's why when you, transfer the fat to minimize chances of it dying we need remember these are living tissue right so when you transfer we expect blood vessels to grow into it eh? so we're trying to minimize pressure on that area so that's why you know post-operative care is very important you follow instructions right and if that fat dies then it, uh, it becomes like what you call fat necrosis what i you know i said earlier on eh? Uh, unless it gets infected, we can aspirate it out, eh? right? Yes. The process of healing is divided into several phases. There is the acute phase, the, the inflammatory phase, then there is the proliferation, and then there is the remodeling, right? So the acute phase is the, the inflammation is like five to six days. That's when you may experience some immense pain, right? They may be, your skin may look uh, bruised, right? Uh, and a lot of reddening, right? Then now there's the proliferative phase, right? Now, it, there, that's when now, uh, you know, things are readjusting, the inflammation is going down, the fat is taking, right? Now that's when you begin seeing these changes, all right? And during that phase, again, you don't, much, you don't need much disruption. So up to six weeks is safe. After six weeks now, maybe you can attempt to use your penis for whatever activities that you <laughs> Yes, yes, after six weeks. The reason I went to study plastic surgery actually was because of the reconstruction bit. Because I was in a far-flung hospital and used to see these challenges. You find someone with a chronic wound and you have no idea what to do about it because we didn't have the, you know, the knowledge. So while in the program, then I discovered this whole field of cosmetic surgery, okay? Now, then I came out here, and uh, let me put it this way. The health of a person dictates their output, okay, towards, you know, formal and informal activities. Health is not just being physically fit, right? There's the emotional bit. Actually, there are three pro uh, prongs to health, physical, emotional, and social. Now, people focus on the physical well-being and forget the social and emotional. It was shown that young girls with big breasts emotionally and socially they don't fit they are affected once you reduce these breasts people who are bottom in their class all of a sudden begin performing i've seen sometimes when when, when clients come here 
even the kind of clothes they are wearing and they are baggy right they, you know they are trying to hide their you know their insecurities but once you do these procedures woo, they change their wardrobe even their confidence is up and i can tell you even where they're working there's someone who told me hey, my, my my colleagues have said i've, I've changed all right i'm easy going so they are not unnecessary surgeries they are very necessary right because as a human being you need to be whole